Morning brothers and sisters, this is Brother Darren once again, Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16, YouTube. I'm taking a look at some articles right now in reference to the biblical account of the Exodus with the Hebrews being freed from bondage under the Egyptians and under Pharaoh to be able to go into the land of Canaan and form uh, their home as Israel. So when it comes down to scholarship for sort of proof or evidence for the Hebrews being in Egypt, there were no records that were kept by the Egyptians to testify to the historical account of the Hebrews being in Egypt. So from a point of modern day scholarship a lot well some scholars um especially obviously the secular scholars will deny that the hebrews was was in egypt however what is not quoted much is a papyrus called or a document called the brooklyn papyrus and the brooklyn papyrus testifies to semitic slaves that were in the land of Egypt at around or just before the time of the Exodus for the period that the um, Israelites were said to be imprisoned. So we're going to have a look at this because this is a powerful witness and a testimony to the truth of the Bible and supporting archaeological evidence that goes with it. So the link is Hebrews in Egypt before the Exodus, evidence from Papyrus Brooklyn. And um, you can see the uh, HTTPS link, but I, I can't read it, but let's go into it. So I'm going to start reading. The transition from a pharaoh who did not know Joseph to the forced labour of the Hebrews and other Semites seems to fit the transition from the rule of the Hyksos to the 18th dynasty and the subsequent policy of forced labour upon Asiatics and other non-Egyptians. Papyri such as the Leningrad Papyrus 1116a from the 18th dynasty, probably the reign of Pharaoh Thutmose III, prior to around 1450 BC, specifies that immigrant people were subjected to compulsory labour such as public building projects after the expulsion of the Hyksos, the Hyksos basically were foreign invaders, under Pharaoh Atmos I and subsequent rulers. This would be exactly the time of the enslavement of the Hebrews. Just as this papyrus describes Asiatics or Semites being forced to construct public buildings, the Book of Exodus records that the Hebrews were involved in constructing storage buildings in the city of Ramses, Pithom, and on. Exodus 1 verse 11. Artwork in tombs from the early and middle 18th dynasty up through the reign of Thutmose III, who was a pharaoh, just prior to the Exodus, also demonstrate the type of slave labour forced upon Semites as described in the book of Exodus. Wall paintings in the tombs of Intef and Rechmeyer now, Rechmeyer was a, um, a vizier to uh, Thutmose III. Show Semitic slaves performing agricultural tasks, making mud bricks and constructing buildings. Egyptian artwork depicts different ethnic groups very distinctively, so distinguishing Semites in a particular scene is relatively simple. The making of mud bricks by Hebrew slaves and the difficulties in the task are detailed in the Exodus account, Exodus 5. A remark on the scene in the tomb of Rechmeyer about an Egyptian master reminded slaves to not be idle. Lest they receive a beating with the rod. Brings to mind the episode in which Moses saw an Egyptian taskmaster beating a Hebrew slave. Exodus 2 verse 11. Although many of these connections are circumstantial. The lack of contemporary texts or inscriptions directly attesting to Joseph, Moses or a large-scale enslavement of the Hebrews specifically 
may be due to the fact that no sites of the period have been excavated in either the central or western Nile Delta region, and that few records from the Nile Delta region in this period have survived. However, an important Egyptian document from Upper Egypt has survived the millennia. While the current scholarly consensus asserts that there is no definitive evidence for Hebrews living in Egypt prior to the Exodus, an Egyptian list of domestic servants written in the Second Intermediate Period, perhaps in the 17th century BC, contains not only Semitic names, but several specifically Hebrew names. This document was designated the Papyrus Brooklyn 35.1446. Rediscovered on the antiquities market, this papyrus was examined by William Albright and Kenneth Kitchen and published in a book by Egyptologist William Hayes of the Brooklyn Museum. I want to scroll down past this next bit. But what it says is, a section of, of Papyrus Brooklyn, 35.1446, contains a list of 95 servants, or I would say slaves, many of whom are, are specified as Asiatic or coming from Western Asia, i.e. Canaan. The servants with foreign names are given Egyptian names, just as Joseph was when he was a household servant under Potiphar. The majority of the names are feminine because domestic servants were typically female. While the male servants often worked in construction or agricultural tasks, approximately 30 of the servants have names identified as from the Semitic language family. Hebrew is a Semitic language. But even more relevant to the Exodus story is that several of these servants, up to 10, actually have specifically Hebrew names. The Hebrew names found on the list include Menahemah, Asherah, Shipra. Now Shipra was the name of one of the Hebrew midwives prior to the Exodus. There is also Aquaba, which is a name appearing to be a feminine form of Jacob or Yaqub the name of the patriarch. Thus this list is a clear attestation of Hebrew people living in Egypt prior to the Exodus and it is an essential piece of evidence in the argument for a historical Exodus. Although it appears that the Israelites were centred around the northeast Nile Delta area, the regions of Goshen and Ramses and the cities of Ramses, Pithom and On this document is from the area of Thebes to the south and includes household servants like Joseph in his early years, rather than building and agricultural slaves of the period of Moses. Thus, the list appears to be an attestation of Hebrews in Egypt in the earlier period of residence in the country prior to their total enslavement and perhaps shows that a group may have migrated south or was taken south for work. While remains of material cultures such as pottery, architecture or artefacts may be ethnically ambiguous, Hebrew names and possibly even the word or name Hebrew clearly indicates that there were Hebrews living in Egypt, although rather obscure. The list includes the earliest attestation of Hebrew names that has ever been recovered in Egypt and it demonstrates that, e that Hebrews were in Egypt prior to the 1440s BC just as in the story of the book of Exodus records. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, this document, this papyrus is not even really well published or promoted or spoken about. And in line with biblical prophecy and the rest of the evidence and a revelation of who Jesus Christ was, the truth of the Bible can be seen and believed on. God bless you all. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9, verse 27 and John 3, verse 16.